Laser beam. Eject. Operation Caroline. Hello fellow YouTubers, Light AWC Star Motioner here. Welcome to viewers new and old. And today I thought I would go ahead and make a tier list for the Transformers animated characters. Because again, another show I love. The characters in the show are just amazing. And the time you're seeing this, it'll be Christmas Eve. So, Merry Christmas Eve. And I just wanted to give a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel this year. At this point last year, I was just excited to be nearing 100. Now this year, I'm well over 400. So I really appreciate that. I'm sorry that my stop motion skills have like not really improved this year. I haven't really done a whole lot of stop motion stuff. I've been trying to improve the quality of my video reviews and the other types of videos I do. Hopefully, I can focus more on you know, still keep doing video reviews and such, but also do more stop motions, because I do have a series I'm working on, I'm just trying to iron out some kinks. So that's just an update. Now before I film this video, I decided to kind of shuffle the cameo characters into this area right here called Not Important. This includes like characters that were just background characters. And I mean, I do have some cameo characters that I am gonna rank higher, but they were more notable. These are cameo characters that didn't really do anything. Some are from like the convention comics that I haven't read and don't want to, because if I do, they don't want the convention exclusive figures. And that just would not be good. So, I have not important. Then down in F I have, I think it's Pipes and Huffer. I put them down in F because I'm mad that a third party company made toys of them when they had like, there's so many other things they could have done and they chose to just make cameo characters. So, yeah. That's that. Either way, we can get on to the good stuff. So first up we have Alpha Tryon. And I'm going to put him in C. Because, I mean, he's not quite the Alpha Trion I'm used to. I'm used to him being, like, this wise old Cybertronian. I don't know. I, I just wasn't really feeling this version as much. So. The Angry Archer. He's going in D. I kind of like the concept. But... Human villains were definitely not the best thing about this show. He was an entertaining villain, but overall I didn't really miss him too much. RC. She's going in... I think I'm going to put her in A. I thought she was pretty cool in this series, even though we didn't really get to see a whole lot of her. I kind of liked the idea they had going for her. She lost her memories. And I would have liked to have seen more of her in the fourth season. Black Arachnia. I'm going to put her in A also. Just because we didn't necessar necessarily see her a whole lot. She was a very interesting character though. So I do like her. I just don't think we got to see enough of her to warrant putting her in S, but she's still great. 
Bumblebee. Ah, <sighs> oh, that's tough. I'm gonna put him in S for now. He was annoying. We did kind of get to see him develop. Only problem is that he's kind of the kid appeal character, and as such, he can't fully grow up. He still has to be kind of a goofball to appeal to kids. So I do feel like he's one that maybe got the least development, just because by the end of the show he was just still kind of a reckless goofball. But I still like this version because it was just an immature Bumblebee who was still good with people. So yeah, I like him. Blackout. Um, I'm putting him in B. I love his design. His design is cool. I'm just a little bummed that they portrayed him as just the typical big dumb guy. When in the live action movie, I saw Blackout just as a merciless killer who would just slice everything and everyone in his path. So, this one's cool, just not quite as cool as the movie version. Blitzwing, obviously. Blitzwing is up in S. I love this Blitzwing, the split personalities. He's just very entertaining while still being a threat. Blur, again, obviously, he is totally going up in S. I love Blur. Where do I put him? Eh, I gotta put Bumblebee above him, only because we didn't get to know Blur too well, but from what we saw of him, I did really like him. He wasn't quite as annoying as the G1 version. He was actually really cool and very likable, and I really would have liked to have seen him more. Braun. Again, he's going in B. Now, I, again, I love the scene, fight scene that Team Athena, or Athena, I don't really know what it seems to kind of vary. But that fight scene between Team Athena and Team Char is like one of the coolest scenes in animated. So that is kind of what's giving some of these characters a bit more of an edge. But again, we didn't really get to see a whole lot of him. He picked up a rock and threw it, and that's pretty much the only notable thing he did. Not really rock, just a chunk of the ground. So he was cool, we just didn't get to see a whole lot of him. I still wish he had a toy. Bulkhead! Obviously I love Bulkhead. He's definitely going up in S, because when you first meet him, he seems like a big, dumb, but lovable guy. Then you find out he's a big, lovable, and actually smarter than you would think kind of guy. He's There's certainly some areas where he still isn't super smart, but he's a really good space bridge technician. So yeah. He had great development, and he's just such a good friend. Cliff Jumper. Eh. See? Feel bad for him because he tossed Blur down the trash chute. At least this version doesn't die, though, so that's pretty nice. Cyclonus. Ooh. Eh. Somewhere in B. there. I, again, the only thing he did was just come in and just slam his swords down on the ground, but that was just so cool. And Cyclonus, of course, is one of my favorite G1 Decepticons, so I just really like seeing him do that, and I really wish we had a toy of that, too. One of the Starscream clones, he had a number, don't remember it, going in D, obviously, because we didn't get to see much much of him. <sighs> Dirt Boss. I don't like Dirt Boss. He's an F. He drove me crazy. The episode he's introduced is like probably the worst episode of the series. So, yeah. Dirt Boss, he's just going in F. Alita One. Eh, she was kind of annoying. I'm... Again, it's kind of weird that we got her in Black Arachnia, but I still like her as Black Arachnia better. 
so she's going down in C. Fan zone. Uh, eh, B. He was kind of annoying, but a little bit lovably annoying, so he's good enough to go in B. Grimlock. I'm going to put him in B also, because we didn't really get to see a whole lot of him. It was nice to see him team up with Optimus, but it just would have been nice to see a little bit, a little bit more of that. They just teamed up in one episode, and that was pretty much it. Headmaster. Um, I'm going to put him in C, just because, yes, he was annoying, but he was one of the human villains that I actually did take a little bit more seriously when he would, like, take over someone's body. Like, when he was in his Headmaster unit, yeah, he was actually kind of a force to be reckoned with. As a guy on his own, no, he's I don't really take him seriously. Highbrow. Eh, see, again, we didn't really get to see a whole lot of him. Just since it was, he's one I consider to be more of a notable cameo character. Yeah, he's good enough to go and see. Hot shot. Uh, I love this character design. I really wish we had a toy of it. In we know there was one. We've, we've seen, like, prototype images of it. And it makes me so sad seeing that I just so wish it was real and that I could just, just have it in my hand. It, I look at animated prototypes that we've seen, and it, it just it makes me feel kind of depressed. So, on that, that note, I really like this character design. And again, it was really cool how he had the flames that would come out of his arms. So, yeah, he goes in B. Ironhide. I'm putting him at the bottom of B because he did annoy me. I was not a huge fan of this version of Ironhide. Of course, Ironhide is one of my favorite characters from G1. Kind of bothered me that this one was a jerk. I'm going to put him above Fan Zone. But if Season 4 had happened, we know he was going to join the main cast. And most likely. He would have, we would have seen him develop more, and we would have gotten to like him a little bit more. I do think he might have become a bit of a better bot after Wasp got locked away, because I kind of think of Wasp as just being the bad influence on him. But as it stands with, you know, the three seasons, didn't really feel too attached. He's definitely not as bad as the Netflix version. At least this one did have a personality, and he had. A voice that I felt kind of suited Ironhide, but still, he, he's just B. Sumdak. Ugh, Sumdak. I like Dumdak. Uh, eh, he's going in C. It kind of bugged me how he was just, like, supposed to be so smart, but he just fell right for Megatron's wise. Just, he struck me as really dumb sometimes. I don't know. He's definitely he's definitely not the worst human character. I don't hate him. I just... He's just not great. Jazz, on the other hand, again, obviously S. I, I love this version of Jazz. He was a cyber ninja and we saw him start to feel uneasy about his position in the elite guard and eventually he just he just left because that just they weren't singing his tune so yeah great character really wish we could have seen him join the main cast in season four the jet twins these guys are going up in a again they we didn't really get to see their individual personalities I do like Jetstorm a little bit better just because of his design. I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead a little bit and put Safeguard here also. But I like these guys. They, again, they were... They, a lot of people found them annoying, which I can see, but they're just kind of the kids that were just in the wrong crowd. You know, I think if they had a better influence and would stop following Sentinel Prime, they, they would be... they could be good bots. 
Man, their elemental powers were so cool. Laser beak. Not really a lot to say about him. Him turning into a guitar was like really cool. So I'm gonna put him in A just because of that. Lockdown. Obviously Lockdown is S. Love Lockdown. He is so cool. I just really like Bounty Hunters. And he he definitely delivered. Not really a lot to say. He's just cool. Longarm Prime, who is Shockwave. And again, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Obviously, S. This version of Shockwave is so cool. It was it was interesting when he was laughing at Lugnut at one part. It's like, I can't help but wonder, even though he was heartless or sparkless, it didn't seem he was completely without emotion because he was actually laughing at Lugnut. But still, I love this when we saw he... There was no, sor no remorse over betraying the Autobots. He just, he did what he felt he had, had to do. Lugnut, again, obviously. Wait, what am I doing? I like software better than Lockdown. Uh, where do I put Lugnut? He's definitely in S, there's no doubt about that. It's just where do I put him in S? I'm just going to put him above Lockdown, just because we did see him more than Lockdown. Lockdown only appeared once per season, I think. So Lugnut, he's just loyal, and he's very vocal about being loyal, and that's what I really love about him. And his punch will kill everything. That was just awesome. Master Disaster. And in all honesty, I'm going to put him in... See, just because I kind of like the concept of him. He was just a street racing host. But that's really about all I have to say. We didn't really see much of him. Megatron. This Megatron is amazing. I love this Megatron. Like, arguably my favorite version of Megatron. Again, him and the Prime version are neck and neck. Because I, I just love things about both of them. While the Prime Megatron was more of a... He just... His voice indicated he was a fierce warrior. This one, the voice they gave him, he, was, he sounded more like he was a master manipulator. And no emotion in his voice at all. Like, I didn't know anyone besides Frank Walker who could voice Megatron. Corey Burton did an amazing job. And I love how... The thing I love about this Megatron was that he spent... Like, most of the first season, not even in the action, he was the one pulling the strings. And that is just... I love that. So yeah, obviously Megatron is S. Meltdown. One of the human villains I am not iffy on whatsoever. He goes up in A. Again, he was one that I took seriously, and he was actually a threat. He was just a really cool villain. And last you saw him, he was just a huddle with a face in it that apparently they actually never had any plans to follow up on, which is a bit of a shame. But they just kind of felt they were done with the human villains. <sighs> Mixmaster. Not a very big fan of the Constructicons, in all honesty. Mixmaster, he goes in... C. I don't know. He's just kind of annoying. Didn't hate him, but I don't know. Nanosec. I do kind of. He's he's okay. He goes in C just because again he was kind of a threat. Even though other than that, I really didn't couldn't take him very seriously. But, I mean, he, he was okay for a human villain. Oil Slick. Again, we didn't really get to see a whole lot of him, but from what we did see, he seemed like he would have been really cool to see more of. I just loved it how he just said, you say that as if it's a difficult thing, Autobot. He just, 
just tosses the vial of cosmic rust and just goes on with what he's doing. Omega Supreme. I can put. I think I'll put him in A. I really do like him. Again, I just didn't feel super attached to him because we didn't realize he was actually a like an actual Cybertronian until near the end of season two. But he was cool. He was a tragic character, but just not quite good enough to be an S. Optimus Prime. Obviously, for me anyway, this Optimus goes in S. I know, a lot of people do not like this Optimus, and I, I can see why. This isn't the experienced leader that we're used to, but I like this Optimus. He's a lovably flawed Optimus. See, the Netflix series had, at least in my opinion, a very unlikably flawed Optimus. Like, this is an Optimus that was flawed to the extent... I related with him and connected with him. It was great to see him develop and you know become a more confident leader. So one of my favorite versions of Optimus. Perceptor. Eh, I can put him in B, I think, just because I thought his voice was really cool. Ooh, how? It's kind of a tough one. Because it's like, I hate him, but he was kind of meant to be hateable, which technically means he is a well done character. So for that, I guess I can put him in B, just because he succeeded in what the kind of character he was supposed to be, but oh, I guess pretty. Professor Princess, oh! Ugh, I hate her. I hate her so much. Okay, Prowl. I made the double S spot just for Prowl. Favorite character in the series. He had great development. We saw him become more comfortable with working together with the other Autobots. I don't know, this, this Prowl was just amazing. And, Losing him at the end was so sad. Ramjet. He's cool. I'll put him in... I'll put him in D. No, I'm lying. I'm putting him in B. But we're in B. Yeah, there, I think. He was cool. Rat Bat. Again, not really a whole lot to say about him. Again, it was a, it was cool. He turned into a keytar. And that, that's about it, really. It's just cool. Ratchet. Again, obviously, I love this version of Ratchet. This is the one that established Ratchet as the cranky old medic. And that's how he's been portrayed since then. Excuse me. And I'm glad that that happened, because that's just how I feel Ratchet should be. And again, this one grew. We, you know, at first he just seems like a grumpy old bot, but as time goes on, we realize why he's so grumpy. We kind of understand it, because he's had a, he's had a rough time. Rattletrap. Eh. I don't really care much about him. Red Alert. Again, I wish we could have seen more of her because she had kind of a cool design. Eh, I'll put her in B. This guy, I don't even remember his name. He was just kind of one of Meltdown's experiments. Hmm. Eh. I'm just, I'm just not feeling it. Top of D. I'll give him that at least. Rodimus. And honestly, I'm putting Rodimus in A. Just because I thought his scene was super cool. I liked seeing him fight against the Decepticons. And again, I would have liked to see more of what he could do. Sorry, obviously. Goes in 
S. Again, she at first she kind of starts out as the annoying kid, but as time goes on, she's was very it was a very interesting twist finding out that she was actually Cybertronian. This is a shame we didn't get to see her origins. That would have been really cool to find out, and no one really knows for sure. Scrapper, yeah, I like him better than Mixmaster. Sentinel Prime, this is similar to Powell in the sense that I hate him, but I was kind of supposed to hate him. So for that, I guess I'll put him in B. Then we got Skywarp, of course he was the coward. Eh, B. Not really too much to say about him. Slipstreet, now Slipstreet was actually pretty cool. We didn't see her a whole lot, but I'm putting her in A. I'd kind of like to know what part of Starscream she is. I mean, I, I think I have a pretty good idea, but it would still be cool to know. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I don't remember her name. The Time Woman villain. In all honesty, I'm putting her at the top of C just because I liked how she kind of talked like a, a criminal in one of the old movies. Other than that though, she's just another human villain. Slag as I'm calling him. Eh, B. He didn't really have a whole lot of personality. Soundwave. I was not a huge fan of Soundwave at first. But as time went on, I actually do really like this version of him. It was a neat origin story they gave him. And they, they did a pretty good job with his voice, so that's really cool. Spitter. I like his design. Again, would have been cool to see more of him. So many characters like that in this series. Starscream. I'll be honest, this is like my favorite version of Starscream, like, ever. I think this is a really cool version. He, I actually felt he was more of a threat. We, you know, he wasn't the sniveling, wimpy guy who wanted to take over but couldn't. Like, this one actually had more confidence. Which also kind of resulted in arrogance and as such stupidity. But I like that about him. Stryka. Yeah, she was, it was just a cool concept. So... I'm putting her in B. Definitely would have liked to see more of her also. I need to stop saying that. Sunstorm. Huh? Well, honesty, I think he's pretty cool. I like him. He was a suck-up. Swindle. Obviously, I, I love Swindle. I love these types of characters. Even though we only saw him in two episodes, it was really cool. I just, I like arms dealers. Swoop. Similarly to Slag, he didn't really have a whole lot of personality. But I'll put him in B above Slag just because he is my favorite Dinobot from G1. Uh, the other clone number guy in D. Thundercracker. Now, Thundercracker is pretty cool, because he's an egomaniac. So, he's probably my second favorite out of the Starscream clones. Trax. In all honesty, I'm putting him in C, just because they got his voice right. It, it sounded, basically, how Trax's voice should sound, even if it wasn't the original G1 voice actor. Ultra Magnus. I, I honestly, again, this is one that probably a lot of people will disagree with, but I really like this version of Ultra Magnus. I liked, what I really liked about him was when he was fighting Starscream, and 
Starscream like took him out pretty easily, which indicated Ultra Magnus had gotten kind of incompetent over all the years of not fighting Decepticons. And as time went on, he just he knew his time as Magnus was coming to an end. And he knew Optimus was the best fit. Warpath. See? It was a cool idea they had going for him. He was a more brutal Autobot. Waspinator. Hey. I definitely don't like him as much as Beast Wars Waspinator. But it was it was a cool idea that they went with for him. It's a shame we only got to see him as Waspinator in one episode, but still. Wasp. Wasp is kind of interesting how it's like I almost feel bad for him because he was framed and he was innocent. But it's also a little hard to feel bad for him because he was a jerk before that. It's like Bullcat said, it, he may have been innocent, but he wasn't a good bot. Wheeljack. He's just going in B, because I obviously know I'm a huge Wheeljack fan. So, yeah. You know he didn't have any speaking lines. Rekgar. I'm going to put him in A. We only saw him in two episodes, but it was, a, it was cool. Honestly, just an ingenious reinvention of him. I really like this version of him. He's really cool. Yokotron. Yokotron, even though we only saw him in flashbacks, he's going in A also. I think he's really cool. I love the way he foreshadowed Prowl's sacrifice. When he told Prowl, you must not sacrifice a piece of the future for the past. When your time comes, you will understand that. And that just makes Prowl's sacrifice at the end of Season 3 just all the more impactful. Alright, that's the animated characters. This is definitely the toughest one, just because it, it takes longer. And this video has been so much longer than I expected. If you stuck around for this whole thing, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So, I think that about does it. It's pretty late now, so I better wrap things up. So, if you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and God bless.